So last night was Dynamite. I thought it was a very, very good show. And obviously the most controversial thing, as it turns out, it's the main event in the elite. Put, Who wait, would have wait ever second. thought? Put controversy in quotes there, because I can't believe anybody is going to be that upset about this, except for the usual suspects that want to be upset about everything. It can't be a real a real controversy, can this? Can is this really a controversy, brother? You're turning it into one. I know you. I wish I you're w- looking, bro. For a I fight. wish there was no controversy. You, you should, bro. I haven't been able to look at my phone in the last three hours. I'm afraid to even. It's 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 like hot. You ever had a hot iPhone? Well, that's what my iPhone's doing right now. I have to charge it regularly. So it was a multi-person match. It was the. Uh, Dark Order versus the Elite. Uh, do I need to say who was on each team? It was Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, John Silver, and Colt Cabana against Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson. This was a Halloween edition of the show, so everybody came out in costumes. And and uh, it's too much for some people. A lot of people, actually. Could not get past the costumes. Oh they couldn't God. get past them to the degree that it's now my fault that they all wore costumes. <laughs> So the elite came out as the Ghostbusters, and accompanying them was the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, and I knew instantly, and I couldn't wait. So then the Dark Order came out, and they had these various costumes and everything like that, and I mean, you know, Jim Ross, he couldn't even hear Proton Pack. I mean, he was out of his mind. He was furious. And, uh, in fact, they wore their proton packs. They used them as weapons. And uh, I thought the match was wildly entertaining because I'm a horrible person. Oh, and God. it built... What a victim. It, vil- it built... I, I was a victim today, brother. It built to the big spot where out comes more Dark Order members. And one of them is wearing a horse costume. And so, of course, you, the viewer, are supposed to think that the horse was Hangman Adam Page. And so the referee takes a bump, and the elite gets a hold of the horse, and they start branding this poor horse. And they hit the four-way BTE trigger, and they kill the horse, and they pull off the horse's head, and it's Brandon Cutler. And, of course, if you were in the crowd and you didn't know where this was going, all of a sudden you knew. And the elite gets taken out. And all of a sudden you just see Matt Jackson facing the camera. He's practically in tears because he knows, too. And standing behind him is the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And this Marshmallow Man takes off his hood. And it's Cowboy Adam Page. And this building went haywire it was the biggest pop of anything on the show by a wide margin and this dude dresses a marshmallow man he runs wild and he kills them and and he kills kenny omega with whatever his finish is where you sit down his pile driver finish and this the building's shaking and of course then uh grayson comes off the post with this huge Huge moonsault. He wipes off everybody outside. This place is going crazy, and uh, and everybody's beloved John Silver ends up hitting his finish on Matt Jackson, and he pins him in the middle of the ring. Dude, this was awesome. If you didn't listen, here's the thing too: if you didn't like it, like I don't not like you. You're welcome to not like it. Some people couldn't get past the costumes. They thought the whole thing was a mockery. And, like, if that's your, that's fine. Like, I'm not going to argue with you about it. You're welcome to not like it. I love Halloween-themed things. It was a match that built to a high spot. And it the high spot ended up being the guy challenging for the title at the next pay-per-view got, by double, the biggest pop of anybody on this show. And he killed Kenny Omega. And, bro, I don't think this costs one buy. I'm sure that there are people out there like, that cost my buy. Well, when the day comes, we'll see if it costs your buy. But I'm pretty sure that this did not ruin the business. It didn't kill the promotion. It didn't run off anybody permanently. You're welcome to be mad about it. I'm not going to argue. I'm sure people were mad about it. I thought it was great, and I enjoyed it. And at the end of the day, it's my show. You want to know what I thought? I just told you. If you don't like it, fine. I know a lot of people didn't like Halloween Havoc. They're also crazy. 
But anyway, that was a good show, I thought. No? I mean, I, this is your show. Am I allowed to speak now, boss? Well, it's man? your show, too, dude. That's why I stopped talking. You are the oh. worst when it comes to not I, not... I stopped talking, and then you don't say anything. That's... Well, look, we, we have not had great... Should I point? Not a, not a whole lot of great cohesiveness this week, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get that back again. Look, bottom line is... I thought it was cornball. I thought it was overdone. With all that, it was said, cornball. I, well, that's the I'm not arguing thing. that. Well, that's one of the whole things is they're going to do these themes during holidays. This is not a this should not surprise anybody with pro wrestling. I, I can't get that upset about it because the whole thing was built. The whole thing built towards the moment, and that's all anybody's going to remember. And the spot with the pro the proton. Pe- there's a lot of stuff where it was like. Again, it was too corny for me. I didn't need it, especially at the end of a show. <laughs> Again, because this is the bottom line. That show was a great show. I, I thought it was a really great show. And if, if the main event killed it for, if you think that's what killed the show, I, I don't know what to tell you. Because the bottom line is the match built towards a moment. And for as little as I could take the rest of the match, Hangman Page Again, and like Brian said, you saw it coming from a million miles away, and if you didn't see it from a million miles away, it was made very obvious to you at the end that when that head came off, it was going to be Hangman Page. And he takes it off, and with the outfit that he's got on, the look at his on his face, the look at Matt Jackson's face as he's turning around, it, it makes it worth it. Is the match a five? The match I could ball up and throw in the trash. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter at the end of the day what you think about this, because all anybody's going to remember is Hangman Page and Matt Jackson and that look on his face and the match that comes up against Kenny Omega. That's all people are really going to, I think, really remember from this and take out of this. And I can't help if you're looking at this with 1974 well, eyes. Can I, I say I, one I thing? Can't help you. Can I say one thing about this? Okay. Sure. So yes, they came to the ring dressed as the Ghostbusters, and they had their proton packs. Okay. Bro, if they would have all pulled out their, their little sh- things and they crossed the streams and then they all took a bump, I'd have hated the match. I would have absolutely hated it. They didn't do that. What happened was they wore their proton packs. When they got sent into the buckle and their proton metal, pro- they sold it. And then somebody rushed to hit them and they turned their back and the guy ran into the proton because it's made of metal. And then they laid all their proton packs on the ground and they did their quadruple power bomb on Colt Cabana onto the, the power packs and he sold it because it's made of metal. There was nothing in this. There was no, they didn't, like the baby face and heels didn't dance together. <laughs> they didn't do invisible man spots. They didn't cross the streams and then take a bump. Like that kind of stuff to me, <laughs> that would have exposed the business. The That's what I was At actually least, waiting for them to do that. You've got a proton pack on made of metal and every time you hit it, it hurts. Yeah. There was nothing in this match that exposed the business. They just wrestled in costumes. They used the packs as a weapon because they're made of metal. You're really pushing the metal thing a little too hard here. It's not like they were I'm wearing just Halliburton. Pointing out. It, they're not wearing Halliburtons on their back where it made it look like, well, they're hitting metal. And it was so pay- – they were selling the fact that, I mean, you're you're taking it into a little too far in the defense there. I'm not. It's not as people awful are mad, as your defense of NXT yesterday. People are mad about the proton but... pack, but it's not like they did some magic spot with it. Everybody was so worried about Orange Cassidy, okay, because they'd seen him do an invisible man spot and this and that. And I knew that he wouldn't do that stuff. Like, they they have a certain amount of campiness and corniness that they will do on national television. But they do not do the Invisible Man. You don't see Orange Cassidy throwing the weak kick and the other guy sells it. He throws the weak kick and the other guy looks at him and then tries to do a spot and gets foiled. Like, they don't do anything where, oh my god, I took a bump for someone who you can't see. They do that stuff on the indies, but there is a line that they do not cross, and they did not cross that line in this match. Did they? Am I missing something? I think the only line they crossed was the one that the needle that goes between campy and corny, and I think they went over to the corny side. But as far as business killing or this, that, and the third, I, you know, again, if you are predisposed to really not like. AEW or some of the people involved at this point, I guess that's what's going to get your goat. I, but here's the other thing, too, with the people that are crapping on Jim Ross. It, what? 
He's welcome to not like them wearing exactly. costumes. Exactly. And the thing is, he doesn't, I know people, oh, he's all bitter and frustrated and this and that. It's like, you know, number one, people forget about the Bell's palsy and all the stuff where it's like he doesn't emote sometimes. It doesn't come out in the way that he means it to. And people take it and they really are then get abusive towards him because of how he may have said something or the, the inflection that wasn't there because he can't. And I think that's annoying. And what I also think is annoying is when, you know, he's got a set of standards and there are things that he is not going to call and he's being asked to call things, but he does not want much like a Gordon Soley or a Lance, or lots of people. They have a certain level of professional where they see themselves where, OK, we're not going to do that. And the business has changed and they AEW wants Jim Ross to be a part of that. But you cannot expect him to call things that he never would have called before to just immediately go, I'm on board with this. Frankly, that's what Tony Schiavone is there to do, to look around every once in a while and go, this is great. And I'm not even making fun of Tony at all. I'm not doing that. But that's he's the bridge. You know, Jim Ross isn't the bridge. And I, I and I know people hate Jim Ross and I, and I get I get annoyed by it. And I know he can be annoying well, to some because he is what he is, but I the principles that he has and the fact he's in that position and they want him there, I think you know, I, I think that means something. It means something to me. The other deal is that his job is to be a credible announcer. Exactly. And that's if it. he doesn't like the proton packs and he tells you about it, that's building his credit. You want Jim Ross to go in there and talk about how cool it is that they're wearing proton packs? Of course he's going to be disgusted with it, not to mention the fact that they're the heels. He didn't mention anything about the babyface's costumes. He buried the heels like they're just such stupid, like, ah, these, these ridiculous and annoying. and Cornball and, jerks. And, of course, they get theirs at the end, as always. That's the point, because they're heels. But JR needs to establish credibility, so when he says... You've got to buy this match to see Kenny Omega and the Hangman. It's going to be the greatest championship match in history. If he has credibility and he, and he tells you that, then it means something. If he that's has no his, credibility and he tries to tell you this, it's like Michael Cole trying to tell you something. And that's why his hard sells are still the best. In my opinion, that's one of the reasons they're still the best is because you can have Excalibur, Taz, anybody else. But when it comes time to sell that thing, I, Jim Ross is still number one. Hey, Brian, you remember the story where Canyon called you from the locker room and asked you if somebody was Fritz past? Yes. Yeah, Canyon calls me and he goes, Alvarez. He always called me Alvarez. Alvarez. I, I'm having an argument right here. Fritz von Eric, alive or dead? And I said... I hope you get your money. It is not on speakerphone. He was just on his. And I said, I hope you get your money, but uh, he's dead. And there's a pause, and then I hear, I told you he was alive! And he hung up. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.